All right, December 7th, 2022, part two. Part two. Again, I gotta do something. I gotta get more storage on the phone or delete some stuff, but I uh, ran out of storage. It said, oh, iPhone storage full. And it cut off the video. So I ran out of memory. Seasons change, right? You run out of memory. Watch the prior video about seasons changing. Uh, so anyway, this is part two of December 7th, 2022. And I was talking about in Philadelphia, um, there is a gas station there. And I watched the video of the local news segment to where you've got all these people going in the gas station, stealing stuff, grabbing, you know, whatever, cookies, soda, beer, you know, whatever. And they walk out with it and nobody stops them. And the cops aren't going to get there in time. I mean, there's just nothing. The people aren't going to patronize there anymore. The good people who just want to get their gas. I mean, you got people coming in there and stealing stuff and hoodies and thugs and, you know, guns and knives or whatever. I mean, at some point, people are like, I, I'm not coming in there anymore. It's not safe. And then the owner's like, well, I can't make any money. How am I going to keep this open? What am I supposed to do? Police aren't coming. What am I supposed to do? Just shoot people and kill them? Kill them for stealing potato chips? I mean, who wants that on their conscience? But at some point, if you want to keep your business open, what do you do? And see, government, and this is, I was going to tie this into the last video, government gets you into this situation because they'll fund wars, dump billions of dollars, spend trillions of dollars on, on wars that fix nothing, like in Afghanistan, basically the same as it was before we went in. But, you know, we killed a bunch of our soldiers. Now they have PTSD. They're suffering for the rest of their lives. They have injuries, mental and physical. We've burned up all this energy, the money, and, and made enemies in Afghanistan. What have we accomplished? Going after bin Laden, Osama bin Laden, yeah, our former CIA asset that, ironically enough, came to fruition. And we made him in Afghanistan as Tim Osman with Al-Qaeda fighting the Russians who were trying to maintain control in Afghanistan. So whatever. More things change, the more they stay the same, I guess. But anyway, this, but, but government creates all these malinvestments and, you know, they'll put money in places where that shouldn't be because they're benefiting from it on the grift, you know, on the side through the trafficking of different objects and things during these conflicts. But the, the country that, you know, Congress people are supposed to represent they do nothing about it. Just let us live in chaos. We're in our gated community. You know, we're not worried about it. Worst thing we have to worry about is our boyfriend bringing a hammer. You know, we might have to call the police then. But anyway, back to the Philadelphia thing. What do you do as an owner of one of these shops? I mean, you've seen it. They go into the jewelry stores and they bust it up and they grab the jewelry and iPhone stores taking all the iPhones. Who's going to stop them? What do you do? You want to kill somebody over an iPhone? I mean, if you're an employee at this gas station, convenience mart, whatever you want to call it, the quickie mart. No, um, if you are an employee there, are you going to put your life on the line for minimum wage to, you know, get between somebody that's going to come in there and possibly, you know, slit your throat? Or are you just going to let them take the chips? Are you just going to let them take the, the case of beer and say, forget it. It's not my problem. But it will be your problem because you won't have a job and the owner will be out of business and then the local community will have nowhere to go to get their fuel uh, or, you know, candy bar or whatever they stop in and get a coffee. That will be gone. So then what? So you got a blighted area where you can, you know, you got to drive further. It costs you more money. So what this owner did, and you're going to see this more and more. He's got private security there with big guns and black outfits. And it says security on there. And that's what's going to start happening. And the people that did interviews and the people are like, good, I feel a lot safer now. I'm glad he did this. So now they can go put gas in their car and an over, overpriced gas in their car and not be afraid they're going to get shot or robbed or carjacked. So, yeah, they've got these armed guys standing at the police station or police station. Police aren't coming, so you gotta you gotta make your own police station. When seconds count, the police are minutes away. So that guy realizes that, and the owner realizes that, and so he's got his own armed security there now. Like I said, I mean, you're gonna see this more and more. The Walmart CEO just came out and said that uh, we're probably gonna have to close stores because of theft. 
because thefts in their stores is rising. And so they're going to close stores or raise prices, he said. We're going to start raising prices because they're losing stuff out the door, people stealing it. Or they're just going to shut the store because if it becomes too problematic, just like this gas station, they're going to say, you know what? Nobody's going to come in here. Nobody's going to want to come to this store anymore because it's just, it's too scary. It's sketch. You never know what's going to happen in there. And so they'll close it and they'll put it somewhere else. They'll put it in the suburbs somewhere. They'll put it somewhere nice, you know, where the clientele is a little nicer. But then it, then your underprivileged communities, you know, where all this crime has been allowed to occur, get worse. So it just feeds itself and it get compounds itself. So it's just going to get worse and worse and worse in those areas. I mean, armed security is probably what's going to happen. And you're going to see things go away. And you're going to have select places where... I mean, if it continues down this path and we don't do something to change it, um, because people aren't making the money, you know, they're not able to survive when you have, this is, this is what happens. This is the fall of an empire. Inflationary death spiral is essentially what's going to happen. This is what they want though. This is what happened in the great depression. It's like, oh, well, you know what? Yeah, go leverage up roaring twenties. Go take out as much debt as you can. Buy as much as you can. The economy's great. Everything's going great. Then they pull the rug on you. And they start taking money out of the money supply and Federal Reserve. Starts taking money out of the money supply. Loans are harder. Harder to service the loans because there's less money in circulation. It's like, man, I can't. The money coming in and, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I'm over leveraged on all this farmland. I, you know, I'm like, oh, it looked great. I was going to continue to farm and I was going to pay for it every year. And now I can't. I'm not going to make it. I can't make my payment. Even though I've paid 75% of it off and there's only 25% left. Oh, you can't make that next payment? Uh, sorry, we're going to come take it all. Yeah, you used it all as collateral. Sorry, we're going to come take it all from you. Yeah, that's what we do. Consolidation of wealth. Transfer from you to me. And so that's what you're seeing now. Make the money harder to get. That's harder service. Uh, pretty soon, you're going to make tough decisions. Fine, I'll sell that at half price. You know, I, I wanted this much for it. I'll just sell it. And pretty soon, it gets bad enough to where it's like, hey, I'll give you 10 cents on the dollar for your property. Okay, there's nothing I can do. I have to sell it. And then if you have real assets that you can use to buy it with, like gold, silver, that have no debt attached to it, or Bitcoin, or Litecoin, or even Digibyte. I mean, if you have solid cryptocurrencies, then you're probably going to be able to scoop some things up. If you have solid money that has no debt obligation attached to it, then you're probably going to win. And all the big players know this. Why do you think they did the, the crypto grab through FTX and all the other exchanges to where that crypto disappeared? The real crypto disappeared. Somebody got it. Somebody took it, right? Went somewhere. Somebody, you know, consolidated their wealth. Money grabbed you. That's where we're at. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can definitely see it where you're in a situation where there are safe zones uh, to where you've got, I mean, you look at third world countries, that's what they do. They got armed people, soldiers, mercenaries. I mean, <sighs> The drug trade, I mean, that's a perfect example of it. You know, these cartels, what do they do? They protect a town. You know, this is where they grow everything outside the town. Their soldiers are the police force, you know, the people that they hire. And they feed the, back into the town with the drug money that they export somewhere else. But they got to, you know, they got to protect their interests. You know, they're on their own and they know that. So they got armed people, you know, hey, you know, and, don't want anybody moving into this area. You know, hey, we need something. You know, we need another well. Okay, we'll put another well in for the town. You know, and the town's like, okay, yeah, they're all in it together. I mean, it's warlord scenarios. Do we want to go back to that? I mean, that's like Mad Max light, super light. But do we want to start devolving into that? I mean, is that where we're going? I mean, you've got a, an empire that's collapsing and frittering away that's just printing a bunch of money, throwing it out everywhere. There's $80 trillion on the FX swaps and whatever, the foreign exchange markets that just got unaccounted for. $80 trillion. Ah, we don't know where. Tomorrow's going to get paid back. I, I don't know. It's just out there. 
so there's going to be a race for real assets because you can print all this money. What if $80 trillion just all of a sudden needs to be, you know, rolled back or, you know, the, the U S debt, 25, 30 trillion, it comes home. Hey, we want to collect. Oh crap. You know, what do you do then? That kind of money, what can it buy? What kind of resources can it buy? Well, for example, you could buy all the Litecoin that ever existed, you know, exists right now for about $5 billion if everybody sold it at the current price, which I wouldn't do. So you're going to have to drive that price up. But that's an example right now. That's why it's a fraud, you know, when you see the spot price of it. Give me a break. $76, you know, that's $5 billion. You could buy all the Litecoin in existence. That's if somebody sells to you at that price. No, that's not the case. So, I mean, that gives you an example, though, of that's all that is, that market, that powerful tool, that that money transfer, that ability to transfer wealth on a network that's outside of government, outside of a central bank, the Litecoin network, that's been running for over 11 years, never interrupted. And that's all it's worth. That's all it's valued at right now. When you have unlimited amounts of money, you could take it and scoop it up. All of crypto is worth less than a trillion dollars. I mean, according to the market cap, you know, if it all sold at the stated price, you know, right now, under a trillion. You got 80 trillion out there floating around. Nobody knows where it's at. Ukraine wants $1 trillion to rebuild their infrastructure. $1 trillion. That's more than all the crypto market for one country. Unbelievable. It shows you the magnitude of how distorted things are. So, I don't know. I, it's, you know, tangible things that you have in your possession are going to be hard to come by or harder to get. I mean, you go to the gas station, you get shot. You go in there and they're stealing a bunch of stuff. You might get in the way and, you know, who knows what's going to happen to you. It's not safe. Find ways to get safe. Find ways to get the things you need so that you don't have to take risks if you can do that, if you can put yourself in a position to do that. But that's that should be the goal, I think. Put yourself in a position where a wise man sees trouble and gets out of the way. Put yourself in that position if you can. I mean, whatever you can do to, to just know what you need to do. If you got to pray about it, you got to, you got to meditate on it. You got to, you know, whatever it is, you're looking in here first and saying, all right, where do I need to be? What do I need to do? And you'll know it. And then you just got to take action at that point. So many of us don't take action. We live a life of quiet desperation. Is that what you want to do? Or do you want to say, you know what? I know what I need to do. I should probably do it. And, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. You just got to take that step forward and start preparing for it. Start preparing for it. Trust yourself. All right. The world is a vampire. Yes, it is. And so it's sent to drain you. Don't let it drain you. Don't let it drain you. All right. Do what you can to get out of that vampire casino. Very important. It's never too late. Never, ever, ever too late. You just got to do something today, though. Right now, do something to improve your situation. Whatever it is, no matter how small. Uh, for example, you know, if you don't have 75, 80 bucks to buy a whole Litecoin, you can go buy $10 worth. You can buy a fraction of Litecoin. Same with Bitcoin. I mean, that's the beauty of it. You don't need to save up and say, well, when it gets to, you know, when I have $75, I'll buy it. Well, then Litecoin's 100 bucks. Well, when I get 100 bucks, I'll buy a whole one. Don't worry about it. You just accumulate things. If you can't afford uh, a one ounce silver eagle with the ridiculous markup that it is, you know, spot price is $23 an ounce for silver, and you're paying 35 for a silver eagle, give me a break. You can go out and get fractional change, 1964 and before a change, that's made in the U.S. is 90% silver. And you can get that a lot cheaper for a few bucks. Get a dime, you know, a silver dime, 90% silver. Check your change, you know, for silver coins. You can pull it out. That's a bonus. And it happens once in a while still. Once in a while, I will come across a silver dime or a quarter. It's like score. That's free. That's in your change. I mean, nickels are worth about a nickel because of the metal content in it, the nickel and the copper. You can just take those and save them. Just regular nickels, any of them. Don't even have to sort through them. Pennies you can sort through. Anything 1980, well, before 1982, 
has 97 and a half percent copper in it. And then it's worth over two cents, two to three cents per coin. So, I mean, there's, there's ways to kind of, you know, if you're, if you don't have any money and you know, you've got change, you've got this, you've got that. I mean, you know, that's ways to improve your situation. My point is do something, find a way to protect yourself. I mean, I know somebody, a friend of mine went and, um, left a tip, a one ounce silver coin as a tip for some car service. You know, he was happy with the deal. The guy did a great job for him. Um, and he was a very fair price. was very, you know, great guy. Gave him, you know, and was honest. And so my buddy left a one ounce silver coin as a tip. You know, it's like 25 bucks. And the guy's like, what's this? And say, oh, it's silver. He's like, wow, I should put this in the safe. This is awesome. Thank you. Didn't know anything about silver. And this is a guy, you know, I've known since I was in grade school and just didn't. See how ahead of the game you can get? See how ahead of the game you can you can be if you just take some action? Go get one ounce of silver. Go scrape together some money and get a half a light coin and then go get another half a light coin. Where do I get it? You can go to a coin flip ATM. I mean, you can go to a lot of different exchanges. You know, you can sign up for Coinbase if you want to. But I mean, you can put cash into a um, an ATM, a crypto ATM, and have a wallet on your phone and send it right to it and you walk away with it. I mean, there's ways to do this stuff. You just got to take action and do it. I mean, nobody's coming to save you except you. And that's okay. But you just got to make sure that you're you're trying to save yourself actively and take some steps to, to do that. No matter how small they may seem, you know, it's just like the guy with the one ounce of silver. He didn't have any, you know, and he's my age, almost 50. So you're going to be way ahead of other people. And when things really crash down, you're going to hope you have something of value. It could be a, a bottle of whiskey. I mean, you could trade if it got to that point. I mean, there's do something to prepare for if it gets to that situation. Hey, what well, what do I have of value that I can get something I need? What will somebody else want? People like chocolate. They like cigarettes and cigars, too. But anyway, no, you got to trust yourself on what you want to do. I mean, you want something useful to you, too, if you can save it up. But anyway, start taking action take a step, trust yourself in all this. I mean, yeah, you got to trust yourself. All right. Love you all. Hope you have a wonderful day. This is part two. Um, there is a part one. You can watch it before this on the channel since it kind of broke up. So anyway, two videos today, two parts. All right. Love you all. Hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and um, yeah, trust yourself.